Life Audio. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to my show, Billy and the Goat. It's your host, Billy Yant. Please hit the subscribe button so we can stay in touch. Many years ago, wow, 30, 36, 37 years ago, <clears throat> that's when I was at Landon School in Bethesda, Maryland. I, uh, I was a running back, and I think I had just been moved up to varsity, and uh, I was anxious, you know, because I played, I think I played a year JV, and next year moved up to, to varsity, and I was, I was anxious about that. I was anxious. I didn't know how I was going to do. I knew the guys were bigger. I knew the guys were faster. And I lined up. <clears throat> I was in the backfield. We were in an I formation. So for some of you who are not familiar with that, basically I'm lined up behind the quarterback in the middle of the line. So anyway, I'm lined up behind the quarterback and he's hunched down under the center and I'm looking straight ahead to the linebacker. His name was Billy Johnston. We'll be right back. There is simply no other experience in the world like traveling to Israel. Seeing the Holy Land in person is a life-changing event you will never forget. Come see for yourself the holiest and most significant sites in biblical and world history. Judea and Samaria, Jerusalem, Nazareth, and Haifa are simply a few of the inspirational, breathtaking places you'll visit. Traveling to the Holy Land will be one of the most amazing trips of your life. Walking the same steps that Jesus did is an overwhelming and powerful experience you will never forget. It's time to go visit the birthplace of the Bible. To find out more about Israel, visit holyland.israel.travel. Israel, exactly like nowhere else. Traveling to the Holy Land will be one of the most amazing trips of your life. Walking the same steps that Jesus did is an overwhelming and powerful experience that you will never forget. It's time to go visit the birthplace of the Bible. For more information, go to holyland.israel.travel. Israel, exactly like nowhere else. So yeah, back to the story. I'm lined up. We had just broken, broke the huddle, and they called a uh, play. What was the play? It was, a, I think it was 131 Blast. So 131 Blast is straight up the middle, which means I'm getting the football I'm running straight up the gut. And the linebacker, his name was Billy Johnson. He was a year, either a year or two years ahead of me. And he's, you know, back then I was scared out of my mind because I'm looking across the line at this guy. And Billy was tough, you know. And the look he had on his face was intimidating. You know, he had these light eyes. And then he was like, it looked like he was about to explode, just like sitting back in his linebacker position, squat, you know, squatting down, looking through his eyes, like we're all bulged out and just like, he looked like a bull, like he was just ready. And I was just like, what in the world? This is crazy. And I got to go up against him, you know, I'm running the football. Right, 131 blast, right at him. So it's going to be me and him. And I'm scared. (laughs) I'm scared. So the only way that at the time, I'm thinking to myself, you know, the only way that I'm going to get through this is to go through this. I can't shy away. I can't get the handoff from the quarterback and run to the right or left. I got to go straight up the middle. So my guy, Doug Briskman, who's a fullback, although I know Doug is, you know, leading me through the hole, I'm still scared out of my my mind because I see 
Billy Johnston, he's just like amped, like fired up. So the only way that I know to get through this, and I'm just got, I had to get like get wired. I had to get like just sort of heavy breathing and just kind of get pumped up and just just go, just go, just go, just go. And I'm just like, all right. And I finally, you know, he goes, hut, hut, hike, hands me the ball. I'm just like, oh, damn. I put my head down. I put it right in his chest. And for all intents and purposes, I won. <laughs> like, I won the battle. I won the battle in my head. You know, I won the battle, like, on the field for that moment, for that play on that day. Because at that time, it was like a really, really big deal. For me, especially, because, I, like I said, I was scared. I was scared of this linebacker. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't want to get put on my butt. I don't want to be embarrassed, you know, in front of my teammates. I don't want to be embarrassed. I was just moved up from JV to varsity. Just all these things going through my head. Wow. But I made it through. But here's the thing about running over Billy. You know, in my head, <clears throat> I was anxious. I was nervous. I was scared. I was all over the place. I was I was petrified. And it took everything, you know, within me to just dig deep and get myself psyched up just so high to I finally, you know, like I said, put my head down and put my head in this chest. Like I remember I remember like it happened like it was yesterday. It was everything. It was like you talk about a huge breakthrough physically, but also mentally. It was everything. And you know that can that can be not just not on the foot just on the football field, but in life. <clears throat> you know, think about things stress us out. And that's what we're talking about this week. We're talking about anxiety. We're talking about stress. We're talking about mental health and how it affects us, how it can shut us down. You can't allow strife, pain, anxiety to paralyze you. Next, I want to talk about, you know, the DUI that I had. She's 120 on Route 66 in Fairfax, Virginia, chasing a girl who I thought I was going to get to know, so to speak, if you will. I was drunk. You know, I got pulled over, but anyway, went to jail, got out of jail, and had to <clears throat> eventually go to court. The night before court, you know, of course, I hired an attorney and all, scared out of my mind, just doomed. More fear <laughs> I think I've ever had. I didn't tell my mom. My mom knew nothing about it. She didn't know about my DUI, nothing. She didn't know about the ticket. She didn't know about court, nothing. <clears throat> Only a couple people knew. That was the people that helped me get an attorney. The attorney was, he was really sure that everything was going to be okay. I just had to basically just, you know, sit there and say nothing. And he would take care of everything. But the night before, let me tell you, I didn't smoke but I was smoking cigarettes. I was at a buddy's house who smoked and he, you know, he felt bad for me. He was like, man, you know, everything's going to be all right. So I'm smoking cigarettes. I'm smoking cigarettes. I'm pacing. He's like, why'd you have a beer? I'm like, man, I'm tag on beer. That's how I got into this, this place, you know, this situation in the first place. I don't want any beer. I was, you know, I was stressed out. But fortunately for me, <clears throat> For my family, for my for my mom, it did not it did not play out like I thought it was going to play out. Did not play out like that. It cost me a lot of money. I got my license suspended for a year. <clears throat> you know, there's there was inconvenience involved, but you know, at the end of the day, I was still alive. No one got hurt. I learned a lesson. And not necessarily most importantly, but <clears throat> here's another situation where I thought going into it, I just thought doom. I just thought doom. And it's so, it's amazing how we can get in our head. Absolutely amazing. And just for me, it's been my experience that 
I spent a lot of time thinking, feeling, knowing the worst is going to happen. And that's furthest from the truth. Nowhere near. You know, something that's a little more <clears throat> close to me is the birth of my son, William. The night before William was born, we went to the doctor, the doctor's office, and because we called in because William's mother was having some cramping and they did a scan. I can't think of the, the, the term right now. They, uh, they checked her out and they said everything is fine. Now, although they said everything is fine, she didn't feel fine. And if you want to fast forward to, you know, several hours later, <clears throat> when we're flying to the hospital at one o'clock in the morning, because... Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Hear the Bible come to life and learn the word of the Lord. With over 7 million downloads, Bible in a Year with Jack Graham is the fastest growing Christian podcast. Do not be frightened, the angel reassured. I have come with good news. In the town of Bethlehem lies a baby, he is swaddled securely in a manger at the inn stables. This child is the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior of the world and redemption of mankind. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. She's got really, really bad cramps. There's bleeding. And it's just a tenuous situation it was it was it was really 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 scary of course William is born 26 after 26 weeks 14 weeks early one pound 14 14 ounces and you know when you have the doctors and nurses all basically saying you know preaching doom if you will and especially the doctor telling you <clears throat> that it'd be best if you let your son go. Let me tell you, it's 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 hard to have faith. You know, it's not easy to be in that situation, especially when you have your son in intensive care with all these tubes inside of him, and he's not able to breathe on his own. And he'll fit in the palm of your hand. You know, it's hard to have faith. And it's real easy to get anxious and have all of these terrible, terrible thoughts in your head. And thank God we were wrong. Thank God for God. Because here we are. Boy, was almost 17 years old. Walking on his own eating on his own, drinking on his own, playing ball in high school, blessing the world. Pretty amazing. You know, I can't describe to you the amount of anxiety, fear, doubt, concern that me and William's mother had and our family had about his situation. But, you know, there is another instance where we're really really anxious and rightfully so and this is the deal regardless of whether you're the situation is sport or 
work related relationship regardless how anxious or in your head you might get or we might get God is always there God is always there right our scripture for today comes from Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus God says don't be anxious God is always there the Holy Spirit is inside of us 24-7. It's always been there, is there, will always be there. Regardless of how heavy it gets, this Holy Spirit is always there. All we have to do is go inside, go to the Holy Spirit. Several months ago, Sunday afternoon, William and I, I'm taking William home to his mother and I have Grand Jean and Clyde on FaceTime so that William can talk to him. And I was eating some potato chips. It's crazy. So anyway, I'm driving. <clears throat> Next thing you know, I'm getting pulled over. This is three, four o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, getting pulled over. So I hung up with my mom. I got anxiety. You know, with all the stuff that's going on in the world, I mean, I wasn't scared, but I was just like, I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of different things that have happened to black men, black people, men and women, getting pulled over by police. And of course, I was in the back of my mind, and I was, I was polite, I was respectful and you know fortunately I didn't have or William and both William didn't have the experience that <clears throat> others have had so the police officer comes up get my license registration sir <laughs> you were kind of weaving back there and I said you know what I'm, I apologize I said I have my my parents on FaceTime and I was eating potato chips I apologize. And he said, he looked at my license. He said, you're a veteran? I said, yes, sir, I am. So he said, I'll be right back. He goes back to his car, and I'm just, I'm nervous. I don't know what's going to happen. He comes back up, and he says, gives me my license. He says, thank you for your service. I said, appreciate it, and drove off. Fortunately, that was it. That could have gone so many different directions. Right. Had I had an attitude, had he had an attitude, you know, I don't want to speculate, but it could have gone awry. Fortunately, it did not. But leading up to that, I was in my head. I was in my head. I was anxious. The Bible says, God says, do not be anxious about anything. The last story I want to talk about, I want to go into, you know, what led up to my suicide attempt many years ago when I was, geez, I was going into my first class year, my final year at the Naval Academy, summertime, we're with my girlfriend, my buddy and his girlfriend, we're in Ocean City, Maryland, and I was all liquored up, I had 10 shots. I did 10 lemon drops. So that's a shot of vodka with, I had 10 shots. I had a lot going on in my life at that time. You know, the stresses, the pressures, the intensity of being at the academy, my mom, relationship problems. My uncle was very ill in the hospital. One of my favorite uncles, she's, I was an alcoholic, just stuff, stress, stresses, 
building up, building up, building up, building up. And I think I just finally got to the point where I just had enough anxiety overcame me. I had, she's one of my classmates committed suicide. My plea, our plea summer, plea summer is your first summer, your first year at the academy. One of my teammates, she's played cornerback with me, was found hung. They said it was suicide. A lot of stuff in my head. Gil Green, God rest his soul. A lot of stress, a lot of pressures, building up, building up, building up, building up over time. And finally, after being pulled over, as you know from previous podcasts, I got pulled over because I tried to <clears throat> hit, I swerved at a pedestrian who flipped me off. So I got pulled over, I think it was three or four police cars. And my buddy in the passenger seat, he had an open beer can. So it was, it was a mess. It was a mess. Wow. But you're talking about stress and being anxious and then just walking away. Literally, the, the police made us walk away. She said, look, give your friends the keys. You walk back to your condo, which we did. And I could have been much worse. I could have been thrown in jail. But the anxiety from all of that, the stresses from previous months and years, from various, for various reasons, added up and added up. And I said, that, that's it. And I attempted to do a nasty plunge off of the third floor balcony. And somehow, that's not how it went. Fortunately, I'm still here today. And there's that anxiety and there are those bad thoughts. There are those demons trying to take me out early. And I'll repeat it again. God says, do not be anxious about anything. By prayer and petition, thanksgiving, present your request to God. All we have to do is ask God, talk to God, give it to God, give it to God. God will give us the peace. God will give you the peace. Will guard my heart, your heart our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. That's what God is. That's what God does. Always has, is, always will. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. Tap into the Holy Spirit. There's no reason for us to be anxious. There really is no reason. As long as we have the Holy Spirit, there's no reason to be anxious. Let me share something with you, something that I learned in one of my therapy sessions, this group session. And one of the things I learned was, which is very helpful, is whatever the stress is, the lady said, the lady was leading the group. She said, if you have a stress, it's when we're talking about sleep apnea and stuff keeping you awake that's in your head. She said, you know, if you write it down, it makes all the difference in the world. Because we can have something in our head and just keep rolling around and just keep rolling around, just bounce around on and on and on and on. Sitting, standing all day, at night, whatever, in bed, watching TV, not watching TV, walking, running. It's just in your head, in your head. But when you write it down and read it out loud, you disarm it. You disarm it. Suddenly, What's going on in your head? You write it down, you read it out loud, you're like, that don't make sense. It doesn't even sound right. So I encourage you, if you're stressed, if you're anxious about stuff, job, school, relationship, friendship, stuff, write it down, read it out loud, disarm it, but most importantly, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. We have to present our request to God. Give it to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Give it to God. Give it to Christ Jesus. Thank you for joining me today. Be blessed. God bless. If you're having thoughts of suicide, taking your life is not the answer. There is help for you. Please call 1-800-273-8255. God is able. Allow me to take a moment to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you will find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and much, much more. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Hear the Bible come to life and learn the word of the Lord. With over 7 million downloads, Bible in a Year with Jack Graham is the fastest growing Christian podcast. Do not be frightened, the angel reassured. I have come with good news. In the town of Bethlehem lies a baby. He is swaddled securely in a manger at the inn stables. This child is the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior of the world and redemption of mankind. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow the Bible in a Year with Jack Graham podcast today. Begin your New Year's resolution with the Bible and see why millions have already started Bible in a Year with Jack Graham. This podcast was created to help you solidify your faith as you experience the story of the Bible through live action recordings and emotional orchestral music. Listen to Bible in a Year with Jack Graham on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts app, or wherever you get your podcasts.